everyone. Welcome to CNBC TV 18. I'm Malvika Jain and I have with me Martin Peters, the MD and CEO of Vodafone India. Martin, welcome to CNBC TV 18. My first question to you, uh, you know, today you have announced your half yearly results. Uh, there is an uptrend that one is seeing as far as data is concerned. Uh, if you look at the overall revenue, uh, do you think that this is likely to continue? Is there any support that you require from the government or other telecom players to take the agenda forward? Yeah, we have seen a great uptake of data services, especially 3G is now already 50% of our data revenues. Um, we normally don't ask for support from the government, but there is a very specific situation in India that we don't have enough spectrum. We've always been uh, staffed from spectrum, even in the voice period, but uh, in data it's far more uh, important to get enough spectrum because otherwise you simply cannot deal with the volumes and the speed. If you have more spectrum, you can deliver higher speeds, and that's what the customer, customer wants. Um, so we have made a strong plea, and as you might have seen, the regulator has come out also with his recommendations for the next spectrum auctions. We really need more data spectrum to become available. Uh, because the growth is going so fast that we are already spectrum constrained with the spectrum that we bought four years ago, the 3G spectrum, and by the way Vodafone uh, only bought it in half the country. There's no operator in India that has nationwide 3G spectrum. So we're all using each other's uh, facilities roaming on uh, other spectrum, which actually even makes it, makes it worse. Um, but I'm going to come to the issue of availability of spectrum a little later, uh, but if we stick to your business plan, are you seeing uh, that there is a downtrend as far as uh, voice consumption uh, is concerned amongst telecom users? Is the number of minutes that each consumer uh, utilizes, has that come down? Has that had any impact on your overall revenue? We saw in uh, uh, the first half year the minutes of use per consumer indeed coming down a bit, but all the other operators have seen the same. It's mainly a seasonal effect. We have not yet seen uh, a real issue that, for example, you, the usage of voice over IP or OTT services is eating into our voice revenue, but we can see that the data revenues are growing faster than voice is now growing, and that's not uh, in a way a miracle because most people are now connected on the mobile phone and, and have developed a certain pattern of use for voice where actually the data world is just starting and starting to explode and with a lot more smartphones coming into the market you can see that people start to use more applications uh, even today the use of video is, is relatively low where all the predictions are that let's say two three four years down the road 50 percent of the traffic will be video traffic and that's very hefty traffic so yes data is the promise for the future but voice is still a very very important part of our business uh, data was in the first half year 13 and a half percent of our revenues but it also means that uh, you know more than 85 percent is still voice revenues uh, for a strong data presence and to be able to provide your customers a very good experience you need to expand your network uh, now you have had said um, that Vodaf for Vodafone, India is going to be one of the primary investment destinations. In terms of network expansion, what can we expect? What are your targets, uh, at least uh, for the coming financial year? Well, we, we are clearly rolling out a lot of network, uh, not only 3G, which is uh, the future more or less, the data services, but also still 2G, because, uh, for example, cities in India are constantly expanding. So we're also building 2G on expanding cities. and. Even we see the usage going up, uh, meaning that we need to build capacity also. So in total, the last 12 months, we have opened uh, 20,000 2G and 3G sites. So that's a massive investment. Uh, so there is a lot of capital. Is there a figure that you can give to me? That well, the last half year, we invested 3,500 crores only in six months. And, and that's kind of the trend uh, we've seen last year and, and, and which like will trend out for the second half year also. So there's massive capital going into the network and it is partly going into radio equipment meaning really customer facing but we're also investing in our distribution channels we're opening a lot of new shops Vodafone stores 
uh, we're investing also a lot in what you don't see as a customer, what we call the back end, but it's really the pipes that are necessary to ship the traffic because the data traffic is really heavy. Uh, Vodafone India is already the biggest data traffic company in the Vodafone group where we actually only have in half the country spectrum for it. Well, so now we're coming to your favorite topic of spectrum availability. On the 30th of November, all the telecom players, major telecom players, including yourself, had written a letter uh, to uh, Ravi Shankar Prasad, the Minister of Telecommunications and IT. And if I could quote, it says that conducting auctions in an environment of spectrum shortage has serious implications on investment, predatory pricing, and continuity of services, and most importantly, on public interest. But the fact is that as things stand today, the Telecom Commission has referred back the recommendations uh, that had been made by the TRAI for certain clarifications. And the plan continues that spectrum auctions will be held in February next year. Even though attempts are being made to make more spectrum available, uh, the government has been in talks, you know, the two departments of telecommunications and defense on vacating spectrum, but nothing has happened uh, to date. How optimistic are you that more spectrum could be made available by the government? Well, I was very glad when I saw the TREA uh, recommendations coming out. I think a lot of good recommendations were in that report, not only on the pricing side, but even more on making spectrum available, and, and also the very strong recommendation that you should not do a spectrum auction without more new spectrum being available, because it will really be disruptive for the industry, it will disrupt, be disruptive for the country. Um, Am I optimistic? Uh, well, that's difficult to say because uh, it was disappointing to see that the Telecom Commission more or less sent the whole thing back to the TRA saying we, we, we don't like it. Uh, let's see what happens. But uh, you can say in general that India is starving itself from new services and quality of services by not making enough spectrum available. Uh, I, I was laughing while you said your favorite topic. I've been in the telecoms industry for 25 years and believe me, the first 20 years I've hardly ever talked about spectrum because oh, yeah. in most countries in the world, spectrum is a given. There is enough and it goes to a few operators. Nobody talks about it. Spectrum is only a big issue in India because there's not enough available and there are too many operators who then have to share it. And it is very essential. Um, I was saying in my presentation, if the government comes with the digital India agenda, which we fully support, and I think it's a very uh, fantastic initiative, it can only work if there is connectivity. And connectivity in the future means broadband connectivity because many of these applications will need broadband. Even the last government came with a recommendation to get to 600 million broadband connections in 2020. Now that can only happen if we get a lot more spectrum. There's now simply not enough. And you don't resolve that by bringing an auction with, without any new spectrum. The only thing that you will get is an even more heavily indebted telecom industry. The operators will have to get additional loans. Already our balance sheets are very weak and that will reduce the opportunity to invest in the future in networks and that's not good news for the country. But for the overall um, economy, at least as far as the budget of the government is concerned, they have targeted around 9,000 crore rupees from Spectrum Auction. So I think they would be quite keen in order to safeguard their numbers to conduct at least one round of spectrum auctions by the end of this fiscal and there is no indication from the government that they are not going to do that even though the regulator did recommend that. In case the government goes ahead with spectrum auctions, how real is the fear that some telecom companies uh, whose licenses are coming up for in renewal including Vodafone, Bharti, Airtel, Idea and Reliance Communications that they might have to shut down their operations in some circles. Uh, if you look at, and this has happened in the past, Uninor for instance, or Systema for instance, did have to shut down their operations uh, in circles where they could not win back Spectrum. I think it is difficult to see what would happen if this uh, Spectrum auction in February would happen in this current setup, meaning there's not enough Spectrum, because we, re we really don't know how aggressively competitors will bid for existing spectrum of existing operators. We, we don't know. It, it's uncertain. But for sure, the prices will go much higher if there's not fresh spectrum available than in case there would be fresh spectrum available. Uh, and again, as I said, you cannot have your lunch and eat it, meaning that the money that the government taps now will not be available for the longer term development agenda of India. So if you put up a digital India agenda, which is a very long term agenda, then you cannot 
every year say, but now my budget deficit is my actual problem, because there seems to be far over 200,000 crores of debt already in this industry. Uh, Vodafone, very soon, will pay more to the government for Spectrum than it invests in its networks, and that is really unseen in the world. Typically, operators pay probably 20% of their total investments for Spectrum. Here it's gone up to 50. So how far can it go? So I think the government needs to make up its mind. It's, uh, I saw an interview with the regulator saying it is a political decision now. You cannot expect the bureaucrats to take this decision. It. It's a political decision. Do you want long-term development or do you want short-term uh, uh, money? And I think you can't have them both. It was the same thing, by the way, that was said last year. And that's why also always the auctions happen in February because it's just before the end of the fiscal. You can't keep doing that. But then do you feel that allowing spectrum trading and spectrum sharing could resolve the problem to some extent uh, because not only is that going to do away with the issue of 3G intracircle roaming uh, but even uh, as far as other spectrum holdings or companies are concerned even if you're not able to win back spectrum in every circle you can bid to the best of your ability and capacity and then share and trade spectrum with other companies well spectrum sharing and trading would partly resolve the issue probably but actually the real issue is that there is not enough available so sharing and trading means redistribution of what you have. The reality is what we have is by far not enough. Other countries have two, three, four, five, ten times as much available. So the real issue is the government needs to make more spectrum available. But in the fringes, yeah, a bit of spectrum trading and sharing might help, but it is really limited. Then uh, can consolidation be a solution. Uh, why I'm exploring these possibilities is because as far as availability of spectrum is concerned, even if the government makes some more spectrum available, that quantum is also going to be limited. It's not going to be as much as you're asking for. So do you feel that consolidation could be an answer? The government had come out with an M&A policy, but we have not seen any forward movement. What is holding the industry back? It's not so much that the industry is holding back. I think the M&A rules have not been favorable enough in the past. And by the time that they become more favorable, you can see that a lot of the operators have already built up such huge debts on the balance sheet that buying them only for Spectrum doesn't make sense because it makes the Spectrum so expensive because they come not only with the Spectrum, they also come with a very weak balance sheet. Uh, we need consolidation in this industry. It is at this moment difficult to see how that's going to happen. And I think the regulator has also said by loading more debt on the industry, what probably will happen is that the banks, which are typically the Indian government-owned banks, are actually ending up with MPAs because these, gu these operators will not be able to pay back And with the debts. new NPA guidelines yes. which are going to be effective. Exactly. We are in conversation with Martin Peters, MD and CEO of Vodafone India. We're going to be back soon after this break.